What's going on everybody? I'm Thomas and welcome back to Virginia Outdoors Unlimited. Today we're going to be taking a look at what gear I keep in my blind bag. Since when I did my channel update video a few weeks ago now, it sounded like quite a few of y'all wanted to hear the different water fouling gear that I bring with me on a typical hunt. So we have three weeks away till early goose season here in Virginia. It felt pretty good to get the old blind bag loaded back up and I'm just going to be going through it and showing y'all pretty much everything I keep in here. Uh, the one thing I will say before we get into this is I have this thing pretty loaded up right now as you can probably tell and I wouldn't typically have this much gear in here for like an early season hunt or a late season hunt because if it's an early season hunt I'm going to leave a lot of my late season gear at home. If it's a late season hunt I'm going to leave a lot of my early season gear at home but I just slammed this thing full with everything I pretty much could think about ever carrying. So this is a Drake 2.0 floating blind bag. I got this last year, so I've been using it for just one season now, and I really like it. Uh, it holds all my gear, has a ton of storage space, it's held up well, so uh, while I haven't used this product for a super long time, I definitely would recommend it based off the limited experience I have with it. Uh, we'll actually just start on the top here. So like a lot of blind bags, this blind bag has a couple mesh compartments right here, and this is where I keep my gloves. In the top right here, I keep a pair of wool gloves, and these are my just extra spare pair of gloves. If my hands get wet, if I just need to warm up my hands real quick, if someone just needs an extra pair of uh, gloves in the blind, these are my go-to, so it's always nice to just have another extra pair of gloves. And then my main pair of gloves I put in this bottom pouch here. And these are my PVC decoy gloves. So these are by far one of the most vital pieces of gear I keep in my bag because these are what keep my hands warm in the morning from the time I get to the boat launch up until I finish setting decoys. These are on my hands because uh, they go all the way up to the elbow and they basically can they keep your hand dry for the entire morning. So whether it be setting decoys, paddling, anything, these will keep my hands dry. So that's basically all I keep up top here, just those gloves. On the side here, you can see there's this little sunglass case. Actually, yeah, y'all can see that. Uh, so I keep a pair of sunglasses in here. I don't hardly ever use these on the days I do need them. I typically forget I even have them. And this blind bag has two big pockets on either side. So you have that sunglass case right there and then another big pocket right beside it. And in here, I keep my binoculars on one side. These are a little bit heavy and I don't bring them on every hunt, but I do bring these on most hunts just because it's nice to have them. Uh, and it's really a, a really helpful scouting tool if you do need to switch from hunting mode to scouting mode during uh, a morning. I do want to show y'all is uh, real quick is this is a box of shells. These are some blind size, but just a box of shells for demonstration purposes. And these side pockets here, a box of shells will fit right in them. So I will sometimes put a box of shells in here. The one thing is that these side pockets are not waterproof. The only the main compartment of this blind bag is waterproof. So if you do put stuff in the sides, you just have to know that if you do splash this thing with water, or dump it in water, that that stuff on in the side compartments will get wet. So flipping around to the other side here, you have we have this other side compartment. And in here is where I keep my drinks and my snacks. So typically I'll put two Dr. Peppers in there before a hunt. I'm a Dr. Pepper guy. Uh, let me know what drink you guys bring along on your hunts. And then granola bar. Typically I'd have some candy bars or something in there. But I love these pockets because they're really, really big and spacious. I mean, I can fit two 12 ounce cans in there plus a couple candy bars. It's nice to just have one spot where I keep all my food, keep it organized there. And then around here on the front, we have this little Velcro pocket. And this is the smallest pocket, so I don't keep a ton of stuff in here, but I do keep a couple insect repellent bands in here. These are basically just a backup to uh, bug spray. If we run out of bug spray, these will work in a pinch. These definitely aren't my favorite and I don't use them very often, but I do bring them along just in case you're in a pinch and you really need something. So just got a couple of those. And I also have a brush in here. So this is a gun cleaning brush. If my gun gets gummed up during the course of a morning, I can take this, you know, do a little field cleaning. It can come in handy for, you know, scrubbing a decoy if your decoy gets real dirty, something like that. And then last thing I keep in here is a knife. 
This is just my handy dandy. If I need to get to a knife quickly, this is the knife I'm going for. It's sharp, so if I'm flaying a duck, I'll use this. If I get, you know, if I gotta cut a line or something real quick, a tangle, whatever it might be, I just grab this really quick because it's the handy dandy knife sitting right in the front of the right in the front of the blind bag. I like to have one really easy to access just in case you do have any emergency where you need to get to a knife really quickly. And that's basically it. So now we're going to get on to the main compartment here, which I have loaded up. So this is the first thing you'll find in the center compartment. This comes along on every hunt because it's needed on most of them. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many times I've been sitting there myself 15 minutes before shooting light and I've had to run off in the woods and use this or a buddy's needed to use this. The day you forget this is inevitably the day it's needed. So I always just try to make sure we have at least one roll uh, coming along with us on every hunt. Another thing I got here is a little dry bag. So this little dry bag typically stays on top here because this is my shell dry bag. Uh, what I do with this dry bag is if I have a box of shells that I'm gonna that I know I'm gonna use for this hunt. So let's say I got 25 Kent shells. I'll go ahead and just dump them in here at the beginning of the morning. And that way I don't have to worry about my box getting wet or the shells getting wet because this is a dry bag. So I'll just close this up and leave it closed up until I need my shells and then I can just reach right in here and grab them. As a kayak hunter, this is really a necessity for me. Doing a lot of other types of hunting, walk-in hunting, hunting out of a boat, you really wouldn't need this, but with that kayak style of duck hunting, a lot of times your shells get wet, so uh, this is just something I adapted and uh, began using over time. We got a uh, pair of gloves here and a little light face mask, so these are really turkey gloves more than anything, but I bring these along for early season. If the mosquitoes are really, really bad, it is nice to have something to cover up your hands with so they're not tearing up your hands. So nice little light pair of gloves and then a face mask. I'm more of a face paint guy than a face mask guy really over the last couple years, but I have been transitioning back to the face mask and you know, now with all this COVID crap, uh, probably to go through the check station at the public spots, you're going to have to have a mask up anyways. Next thing is my GoPro Hero 8. Nothing too fancy here. This is my head cam, so uh, this goes on before every hunt. And uh, yeah, just my main camera. I don't think I put, oh yeah, I had my other, I forgot to put my other GoPro in there. But there's my other GoPro. This is a GoPro Hero 5. And this is on the gooseneck so that I can mount it on a pole or a tree, bran tree branch and set up my stationary angle like I like to have it. Here is my camera battery box. So this is what I keep all my GoPro batteries in. Uh, you can see my Hero 8 batteries right here. I've got my Hero 5 batteries. I got my SD cards and then I got my GoPro wrench for taking the screw out of the GoPro. So this is like my handy dandy box. If I need anything GoPro related, it's in there. Uh, I would like to get something that's waterproof because this is not a waterproof box, but it's nice at least for organization. I know where everything is and I can get to it pretty quickly. This is probably the most essential piece of gear in this whole box actually because this has saved me on multiple hunts. There's typically one hunt every season where I pick up a nasty little cut that would probably drive me back to the truck if I didn't have this, but I keep in here some band-aids and some antiseptic cream. So if I get injured or my buddy gets injured, uh, I can pretty much patch them up or patch myself up in the field. You know, if it's something really bad, I can't do much. But just got a couple band-aids, a couple disinfecting wipes in here. Always make sure to have this in my blind bag, whether it be late season, early season. Uh, because like the toilet paper, the day you forget this at home is going to be the day that you need it. Next thing we got is bug spray. Uh, there are days that I would not go out with this and there are plenty of days that I don't need this. You know, it's bug spray. It is what it is. You know, get the most DEET you can and there's not too much else to say about that. Got three pairs of hot hands. I typically bring these along and don't really get to use them as much as I'd like to. I wish we had some colder weather here in Virginia where I got to break these out more, but I think I got to use these maybe a couple times last season. I typically just bring a few pairs though. You know, if Buddy needs one, I'll throw him some, but uh, typically I don't use these unless it's like 20, 25 out. So haven't been using them too much, but I typically keep at least a few in the blind bag just in case. We got the trusty old shells, so like I said, typically before a hunt, if I had my regular old box of shells, I'd take these and dump these into the uh, dry bag, but I uh, just got a box of Kent 
three inch number three shot. So pretty typical stuff for me to be shooting. Got my calls and I probably have a few too many calls on here right now. My call lanyard is filling up quickly. I've been getting a few call, a few new calls here recently, but um, nothing special here. You know, I got a teal call. I got a whistle. I got a woody call. Got a few mallard calls and a goose call. Uh, hunting the Atlantic flyway. I do need a few different calls because you know we're typically hitting the woodies pretty hard, but also we get some teal, we get some geese, we get some uh, big ducks as well. So. There's my call lanyard. So now we're getting into the real tools. Uh, we got a saw and a knife. Uh, these are kind of my blind building materials. So if I ever need to build a blind on public land or wherever I might need to build a blind, bring a foldable saw. This is the number one go-to for building blinds in my opinion. Uh, this just gets the job done. And this is really all you probably need to build most blinds, you know, just something to cut down those larger sticks to frame out and then you can break pretty much all the smaller stuff with your hands in my case, at least from my experience. And then just a little knife. This is more of my backup knife if, you know, I lose my first knife, whatever it might be. Uh, this is a Bear Grylls knife. It's not the nicest knife in the world, but just a good one to throw in the bottom of the blind bag and not really think about too much. And we got the old camo tape here. Uh, I like to bring this for two main reasons. One, you never know when you might need to camo something up on the fly. Something might be sticking out on the boat, on the blind. Wrap it up with the camo tape real quick and it takes the shine off something. And then also just for binding things together if something breaks out in the field, you know, duct tape will typically, uh, you know, at least give you a fighting chance for fixing it. So I like to bring along half roll, roll of duct tape. Last couple things I got in here are choke tubes. Uh, this is my factory choke tubes, so I keep them in another little tackle box. I got my full, my improved cylinder, my modified, and then got my choke wrenches in here as well. Uh, this helps basically just keep the chokes dry if my blind bag does get wet. But uh, yeah, just another handy way to keep them organized so I can get to them easily. All right, and the last thing I have in here is the old trusty flashlight. So typically I'd have a headlamp in here. I guess I forgot to pack mine up, but this is what I also bring as a backup for my for my headlamp. Uh, this is more of a frogging light than anything, but uh, if I see someone walking in towards us on public land, this is perfect for that. You know, this thing can light up a whole area. What is this? 750 lumens. So not super, super bright, but bright enough for sure. And that concludes everything I had for my blind bag talk. You can see got the empty blind bag now. I'll close it up to give you all a little look at what it looks like when it's not full of my gear. It's actually not the biggest blind bag in the world. Uh, when I have it all full with gear, it looks like it's absolutely massive, but uh, actually just it by itself isn't that big, especially the gloves under that front lid. Uh, that does make a big difference just in terms of how much space it takes up. Uh, but if I was to give this blind bag a quick review, I'd say I'd definitely purchase it again. I've had good experiences with it so far. We'll see how it lasts through a couple more seasons. I think that'll really be um, more of a real test, but I'm pretty impressed with it so far. If you guys have any questions about anything I said, drop it in the comments section down below and I will make sure to get back to you and answer your questions. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel and you guys enjoy waterfowl content, make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my waterfowl hunting videos this fall. We're only three weeks away till early goose season here in Virginia, so it's coming up really quick and I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to get back out there chasing the birds. I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. I hope you all are out there staying safe and thanks for watching.